Hey folks, in this video we're going to be doing this white oak end table with a 22 inch round top and it's about 24 inches high. Uh, this um, build was a bit of a challenge of, since I've never done a circle before. Um, these angles here were a bit to figure out. Um, and usually when I do a chamfer on a piece, since it's straight, I usually cut it with the track saw. So this I had to have a 60 degree um, router bit to do that. So yeah, lots of new things on here. It was a fun, challenging project. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Okay, so we're starting off with some rough sawn white oak. These are eight quarter by uh, eight inch boards. I think this one board is 14 feet long and it's gonna make the whole project. So I'm chopping them into about 30 inch pieces. Um, and then I'm uh, joining the one end. So I just got that joiner and this is the first time using it. And um, right now the issue is, see that little split right there? So that was holding me up. But the grain on the end there is kind of running in both directions, so there was no good way to run it through the joiner. But uh, once I got that little piece off, it worked fine. And I have to say, like, I don't have room for a full-size joiner. I would love to have a full-size joiner, but I just don't have the room in my garage. And this little Wahuda works great, I must say, for, uh, you know, anything less than four feet, it works pretty good. And it's got a um, segmented, they say helical head. I don't know if it's really helical, but it works great. So I also got lucky because I just had an edge joint, the one edge, the, the uh, bottom of this board was completely flat. So I went straight from the joiner to the planer to get it um, to the thickness I wanted. So I wasn't planning on putting dominoes in this board, but this board has a little bit of a wave to it. So um, I decided I'm going to put three dominoes down um, each edge and three pieces of this eight quarter joined together is going to make up the top of the table. Now eight quarter is sort of thick for this table. It does have sort of a delicate design, but I'm going to plane it down to about an inch and five eighths. And also what I want to do is give that tabletop a 60 degree under bevel to give it a little bit more of a thinner appearance. So just getting the last few dominoes in here before the glue up. Now that 60 degree under bevel I mentioned, I'll be doing that with the router. And um, there were quite a few round router blunders in this video. So we'll go over those when they happen. All right, so just spreading the glue out and getting ready to go in clamps here. Now this glue up went fairly easy. Um, the dominoes, I. So the way I do my dominoes is on one side, I always make it tight and the other side, I make it on the medium setting where it's just a little bit looser so I can slide it side to side just a little bit. And I usually do that when I do panel glue ups. Um, for joinery, I usually make them tight on both sides, but panel glue ups, I usually leave one side a little on the loose setting. So if the domino cutter was tight, on both sides, I wouldn't be able to hit it side to side like I just did there. And I, it gives you about, I don't know, on the medium set and probably about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch of movement. That's lateral movement, obviously. And the more dominoes you have on a panel glue up, I think the more important it is to have that little extra bit of lateral movement because chances are one of those dominoes won't be exactly in line with the other. So just playing the odds. Okay, wiping up the, um, the squeeze out here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a couple of clamping calls on here just to keep everything in coplane. And if I recall correctly, uh, coming out of clamps actually, but if I recall correctly, I think the, the edge alignment on here um, wasn't lining up perfectly up and down, even with the domino in there for some reason. So that's why I threw those clamping calls on there. All right, so out of clamps and ready to uh, to draw our, uh, our circle on here. So just a big pair of dividers. This table top is gonna be 22 inches, so I'm 11 inches on the radius and just drawing a circle. Um, cutting it out with a scroll saw blade on the jigsaw, which turned out to be a bad idea. So this, this 
So this really thin scroll saw blade turned out to be a bad idea. I think I broke it twice trying to cut this out before I switched to a regular size blade. Um, I think I was just trying to go too fast and this white oak is pretty hard and it was, you know, it's an inch and a half thick. So it, I think it was just heating up too much and I snapped the blade a couple of times there. Okay, so it's time to refine this circle a little bit. Um, you know, I cut it with the jigsaw, so it's a little wavy. So originally, what I thought I was going to do is I was going to cut another circle out of a quarter inch piece of plywood um, with a jigsaw, which I did. I was going to take it over to the, the belt sander over there, clean up the edges so they're nice and smooth to the line, which I did, but it's it's probably really hard to see on camera, but it's not so smooth. It's a, it's a bit wavy, so I don't think this is a good option. So my second thought was to use the circle cutting jig on the router. I have a compression bit. The problem with this compression bit is the bearings are um, on the bottom there, so I can't, I can't plunge this through. Um, and I need a place to start this. So what I'm thinking is I have this pattern bit where the bearings on the bottom or the top, depending on how the router is. And over in this spot of the tabletop, I'm almost on the line. I'm maybe a 16th inch off the line. So I'm thinking I can plunge the pattern bit down all the way through in two passes, clean up about an, in an inch worth of space there, and then use my compression bit after that. So I think the cutter is the same diameter as the bearing, and I can get the bearing past it because this is probably three quarters of an inch, and the tabletop's like an inch and an eighth. So we'll see. Um, I know there's somebody out there laughing at me going, what is that guy doing? And uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. This is the first time I'm cutting a circle with the router. So uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right. So I have a four penny finish now as my pin for this. And here's my first routing issue. And this was the biggest one I had. So that circle jig that I made for this project. I made it out of quarter inch plywood and it was much too thin. And you're going to see here what happens when I switch out from this templating bit to the compression bit is I have a full size router on this quarter inch plywood and like 50% of that router is overhanging the project. And that quarter inch plywood is flexing a lot and when it flexes the bottom of the bit digs in more than the top and you're going to see what happens here um, when it grabs the end grain it was uh it was pretty scary so i did end up remaking this jig into half inch plywood because like i said it just flexed too much so you're going to see right up here you can see that little knot on the bottom of the board it grabbed and it kicked back um it was pretty scary i didn't get hurt um so what i had to do here to fix this was I had to shorten my diameter um, by a quarter inch and reroute the whole thing after I made the new jig. So you can see here I have a half inch jig instead of that quarter inch jig. So yeah, that was, that was a big mistake on my part. So there were no issues um, after I remade the jig, but that big compression bit still scares me. I've had it even in the router table. Um, I've had that bit catch some end grain and give a pretty fierce kickback. So here's the bit. It's kind of scary looking. Um, so it's 60 degrees. It's about an inch and an eighth this way. So the overall um, length of the bit is about two and a half, two and three eighths inches. So this is the biggest bit I've ever um, spun in this router. Um, my surfacing bit is about two inches, so this is about three eighths bigger than that. And I had to modify, I had to cut a new plate because the plate that comes with the router wasn't big enough to accommodate this. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to slow the speed of this down because that's a big bit. And I'm gonna make really shallow passes. So here's the first pass. I'm taking about a quarter inch off and it's going pretty smooth. It's not catching. I think I got the router tuned to the right speed. So it's going pretty well. Then my second pass, I'm taking, I'm taking the rest of it off in one pass. So I actually only did this in two passes. 
And here I just have a little like a uh, chocolate epoxy mix to fill um, only a few knot holes. I had the one on the end grain here and then you'll see when I flatten it, there were I think three or maybe four small knots on the surface that had to be um, filled. And this was top and bottom. So I had to do the top, let it dry and then do the, the bottom. Um, but yeah, that was it. That was it for the knot fill on this. Now, while this was curing, I milled down some of my inch and a half thick planks down to an inch, and those are going to be for the legs. So I made a little template for this, and I traced my three legs out on this uh, one inch white oak, and I'm just rough cutting it with the jigsaw here. And then I'm going to use my template and just um, double sided tape sticking it back on. And then I'm going to use my template to clean up the edges with that same compression bit in the, in the router table. And the grain, you know, you're, you're going all the way around the leg, right? So you're going to get end grain somewhere. So, I did have one or two small kickbacks while I was doing this. Um, however, I forgot to turn the camera on for one of the longer recordings, so I only have a few seconds of this. But it went pretty smoothly, like I said, just maybe one or two minor kickbacks where it caught the end grain. It, I was surprised um, because I only had about an eighth of an inch to take off, but I think the issue might be the router motor that's in that um, router table is an older port cable that's single speed. There's no speed adjustment on it. So the speed might have had something to do with it. And now I'm just cleaning up the edges on the, um, the stationary belt sander there. And now I've taken some of my one inch uh, stock and I've milled it down to three quarters of an inch. And now I'm just um, squaring up an edge on here. The other edge is jointed already. And then I'm just going to cut, I think these were like two and a half or two and a quarter inch pieces. And these are going to be the stretchers for the underside of the table. So I'm cutting, I think, two or three pieces. Um, there's going to be three stretchers, but I think these are long enough so I can get two stretchers out of one piece. And you can see my writhing knife is magically back on the table saw. I think I had it off because I was doing some dado cutting prior. Okay, now I have the chamfer bit in the router table, and I'm just going to chamfer the, uh, the back sides of these legs. Okay, so... The way I got my layout for my legs is I took my calipers and I still had the center hole from when I cut the circle and I, I set the table up um, in a way that I like the grain orientation. So the grain's going straight up and down here. So I put the caliper in the center point. I marked a dot. Um, in the center of where I like the grain running. Then I brought the calipers, calipers to that point. I marked the point here. I marked the point here. I moved the calipers down to those two points and marked the point and marked the point. And then these three points, one, two, three, are the centers of my stretchers. So then what I did is off that center line, I used my centering ruler and I know my apron is, or my stretcher is three quarter inch. So I did three eighths off the center each side and connected all those, those dots. And that's how I got the layout. And then, um, I took my angle bubble here and I figured out that this angle is 30 degrees. So I have to cut the centers 30 degrees on each side. Now, originally, I don't know if you can see this on camera, I made this little template here. And what I was going to do is I was going to glue some blocks together and cut this 
this out with the router as the center hub and then attach these um, stretchers to it instead of having these angles because this is end grain here and it wouldn't be that strong of a joint. Not that it really needs to, it's not doing much. Um, it's more decorative than it is functional. The legs are going to be holding everything up. Um, but what happened with, with this is when I had my blocks, these are the cutoffs from the, the circle itself. And I put them like this. I don't know. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then I laid my template on it. There was no way to arrange these three legs where one of the legs wouldn't be on the end grain, which would make it really weak. Um, and also it just looks a little funny. So then I watched um, a four eyes video, Chris and Sean, and they made a hub like this, but the, what they did is their blocks were all cut on a 45. The grain was on a 45. So they put everything together on 45s. And in that way, the legs work out where it's, where it's not just the end grain or the, uh, the short grain. The problem is this is, this is all of the leftover wood I had. I didn't have any more wood, so I couldn't recut these blocks on a 45. So hence I went with the, the angles, but this should work fine. I haven't decided if I'm going to stick a domino in there yet. I don't know if my domino cutter will do something that small. I think it will. I think um, the four millimeter bit will, but I haven't tried it yet. So I'll think about when I get to it, I'll think about whether I'm going to use a domino or not. But anyway, that's how I got this layout. Okay, setting up the table saw to cut the 30 degree angle on the stretchers for the apron. Um, usually I like to get it like a tenth of a degree under, so 29.9, but I just couldn't get it to stop there. But 29.6 worked just fine for this. Um, so the angle is actually 60 and then the half of it's 30, so that's why it's 30 degrees. So this needs to be cut on all three stretchers. Now, obviously, you can cut this with a miter box, but I just feel like I get a more accurate cut with my table saw. Um, funny enough, I forgot to change the blade, and I have a 24-tooth ripping blade in here, but it's a brand new CMT Extreme Thin Kerf blade, and it cut the white oak with no tear out. Um, it was quite nice. I was happy with it. Okay, just mocking these legs up so I can see how it looks. I still have to um, cut the length of the stretcher here. This should be flush with the table, the end of the table like this. I might set it in a little bit. I haven't decided. I kind of like the way it looks flush though. Um, and then it's going to get dominoed to the legs. And like I said, I still haven't decided if I'm going to domino the centers yet. But that's about what it's going to look like. So this is the first time I'm face jointing with this jointer and this is a seven and three quarter inch white um, wide piece of white oak and I have to say it went through the jointer quite nice um, and it came out smooth there was no chipping or anything so again I have to say I'm pretty happy with this jointer and then straight from the jointer into the thickness planer and now I'm just rough cutting um, the lengths and this is for the bottom shelf so I needed um, just over two pieces for this. So it was two pieces and a strip and the glue up for the bottom shelf. And I had the diameter roughed out on the bottom of the top shelf. So I'm just setting it on here for reference, for size reference. In the end, it didn't help me much because after I came out of glue up and went to draw the circle on there, I realized I was a little short and I needed to add like a two inch strip to the outside of this. So here we're going into glue up. Um, no dominoes for this one. The boards were pretty straight. So um, just the clamps. And I think I actually added a call to just, just to make sure it was um, just to make sure it was in coplane. Hey, and if you've stuck with me this far, um, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe and notification button. It helps my channel grow. And as always, thanks. So uh, clamping calls are going on. Then I'm going to let it sit overnight and 
pull it out of the clamps. So you can see that strip I added on. I think what happened is I actually measured it while it was drying up and I realized it was going to be short and I snuck that piece on off camera. But there it is. So now drawing the circle for the bottom. And this was a little tricky to get the size because this is going to actually sit in a mortise or a dado that's going to be in the, the legs. So I had to cut like a little dado in all three legs for this to sit in. Now this went to, through the same process as the top shelf. I cut it out with the jigsaw. I refined it with the router, but what happened here, my, I think this is my third router catastrophe. Again, the bit caught the end grain and tore it out, not having good luck with the router. Okay, so you saw that big chip out I got on the long grain side with that um, flush trim router bit. This is not fitting together very well. It looks like it's missing some pieces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the joiner, flatten it, and then just uh, put another piece, another square piece on here and then uh, trim it again. So let's see how that goes. So a couple of passes through the joiner and we'll be back in business again. So I'm still feeling my way through this whole video process thing. And I'd like to hear from the viewers if you think there's not enough detail, too much detail. Um, yeah, it'd be really great to know what I can do to make these videos better. So thanks for uh, any feedback I get. Okay, so jointed and uh, ready for glue up. All right, so just, um, you can see the grain match was pretty good here. Um, you know, it all came from the same board, so the grain match should be good, but I was really happy that it was that good. So just a couple of clamps, gluing it up. And while that's drying, I am putting in the dominoes for the legs into the stretchers. So each, each leg is gonna get one domino into each stretcher. So three dominoes in total. So while I have the domino out to cut these, um, these dominoes in the leg, I also tried the, the apron piece, the, um, the stretcher. So this is a three quarter inch piece and it has those 30 degree angles on there. And what I found is each one of those 30 degree angles would have to get um, a little four millimeter domino, but they were running into one another. So it just, it wasn't gonna work. So this is where I decided to forego the dominoes in the hub of that apron. And here I'm just cutting out the patch that I did on my bottom shelf. And then we're going to go into glue up of the hub. And it, like I said, no domino, just gluing it up. And that's just a little piece of paper on the table there just to keep the glue off of it. Okay, so I had a little bit of a goof up when I was doing the background over on my legs. And what I did is I made a mark where I needed to stop. And I carried it over on the sides a little bit so I could see it with the router. And I needed to stop there. Well, on this last leg here, I don't think I carried this line over on the side. You can see the remnants of it over there. So on this side, you see there's no line and I blew right past it. So what I need to do to fix this is I'm going to take it to the table saw. I'm going to take about three sixteenths off on, on a 45 this way. And then I'm going to glue a new piece in here. And then um, after the glue dries, I'll route it to where it's supposed to go. At the table saw to cut in the section where I need to graph on some new wood. So I was only able to go part of the way with the table saw and then I had just had to clean it up with a flush trim and then a, a chisel to clean up where the flush trim wasn't flush. And again, is this too much detail? Is it too tedious? Do you like seeing the fixes or should I just skip over this and continue with the project? Let me know. As I was watching the playback for the video here, I realized I probably should have used my dovetail saw to uh, do the cross cut as it has, um, you know, it's a little bit more rigid. Although I would still would have had to use the um, flush trim saw for the rip because the dovetail saw has that spline on the back of it, so it probably wouldn't have fit in the uh, the kerf there. 
So just cleaning up with the chisel now. Um, I had just sharpened my chisels before I started this project, and it's going through the oak quite nice. I was happy with uh, how smooth it cut. There was uh, no tear out or chipping or digging in. It just nicely planed it off. Okay, so we're all cleaned up and ready to graph the new piece on. Just spreading some glue on both sides, and then uh, we'll get a couple of small clamps on there. Now, I probably should have cut some um, complementary angles so the clamp would hold, um, you know, the right position. Because uh, the opposite side of where this is getting glued on has a slight curve in it. And it was a little tricky getting the clamp on there. But as long as I didn't add too much pressure, it worked okay. So the next challenge will be squaring this graft on piece of wood up. Um, you'll see I was able to cut one side of it with the table saw pretty, pretty flush where it just needed a little uh, sanding to square it up. But I couldn't cut the opposite side because again, there's a curve in that leg. So I ended up having to clamp this to the bench and then um, plane it off. And it was probably about three eighths of an inch that I had to plane it down. Uh, luckily it wasn't very wide, so the plane went through it pretty easily. You can see it's going through quite smoothly. but. Yeah, that took a couple of minutes just to get it down flush. And then uh, I used the sander to get it the rest of the way. So after I had this graph piece cleaned up, um, the next order of business was to cut those dados in the leg to hold up the bottom shelf. So I have a stop block set up on my miter gauge and I have um, the marks on the legs themselves and I'm just going to sneak up on it um, with the the crosscut blade. I opted to not change in the dado stack since it was the only dado I was cutting. And then my youngest decided to pop in to say hi. She's holding my figure eight fastener there. And here's this, the stretcher hub that I glued up and I've, mo I've uh, I guess, mortised in some recesses for the figure eights to sit in. That was just, um, I think it's a half inch or three eighths Fostner bit I used to um, mortise those in. So the reason I'm attaching this to the bottom of the table now is that I needed it there so that I could do my leg glue up. The leg glue up was kind of complicated. So what I needed to do is I needed to glue all three legs in and then I needed to put my 90 degree squares on there so that I can make sure the legs were straight up and down. And then I had to sneak the bottom shelf in the mortises that I made on the legs. And to hold that together, I needed to use um, a strapping clamp, a picture frame clamp. Um, so it was kind of a, a juggling act. You'll see further along in the video um, how cumbersome it was. But having this affixed to the table made it a bit easier. So here I'm just gluing in the three legs and then you'll see I'll try sneaking the shelf in there. So I'm gluing up those dados that I was telling you about. And now I'm gonna this with this was really cumbersome with one person trying to get this without it falling apart. Luckily the dominoes helped a lot. And now I'm putting on the picture frame clamps. And this, this was a bit tricky too, because it kind of, it wanted to torque everything out of, out of square. So you had to be gentle with the pressure. And once I had it holding, then I was able to go back and add my um, 90 degree squaring blocks so that I could square everything up nice and straight. This was definitely one of the more stressful parts of the build. I was really worried the glue would set up before I had everything aligned properly. So here we are all clamped up with the 90 degree clamping blocks on there. I let it sit overnight and now it's the next morning and I'm pulling all of the, uh, the clamps off. 
So this is the first time since I started the project that I am going to see it all together. And the only thing left now is to stain it. Okay, I'm getting ready to stain this. And I did a test with DC smoke on the piece of white oak. And it was a little too light for me. It was lighter than the color I was looking for. So then I got um, Rubio Havana. And I did a sample of that. And you, if you can see where it went in the grain, it's a little too dark. Um, it almost looks black where it went in the grain. So then what I did is I put some of that Havana over the DC smoke right here. And I kind of like the way that looks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one coat of the DC smoke, and then I'm going to put a coat of Havana over the top of it. Okay, so you guys all know the drill by now. So if the Rubio goes on with the white pad, you work it in, you wipe it off. The only th thing different about this build is I was using two different colors. So the first coat is the um, the DC smoke and once I had that on and let it sit for a day I went back and I did the same process all over again with the uh, Havana on with the white pad and then um, wiped it off wiped all the excess off so the client for this end table was my wife she's been complaining that um, I keep making furniture for everyone else and nothing for our house so this is the first piece of furniture that I made that will be living in our home. So that's pretty much a wrap on this build. I'd like to thank you for watching and we'll fade into some music. Mm -hmm.